Hello, how are you? I'm Hector Perez from Dev School. On this occasion, we're going to discuss a question that's very common for those just starting in the world of C Sharp. What's the difference between using a decimal data type, a double data type, and a float data type? Do they all serve the same purpose? If so, why are there three different data types? Well, these and other questions will be answered throughout this video. All right, let's discuss the differences between these data types used in C-sharp and other programming languages. To truly understand the difference between these data types, we need to grasp some basic concepts. The first of these is the concept of precision. Precision refers to the closeness between two or more measurements. For example, if you measure something five times and get exactly 6.32 each time, then that measurement is very precise. The second term is accuracy, which refers to how close a value is to a standard or known value. For instance, if you measure something and find it to be one meter long, but the known value for the object is five meters, then the measurement is not very accurate. Lastly, the term arithmetic precision refers to the number of digits used to represent a number. For example, the number 6.34 is less arithmetically precise than the number 6.34232342. With these terms in mind, we truly need accurate systems. This means we can't have a multiplication of 6 by 8 giving us 25. Instead, we want every multiplication of 6 by 8 to equal 48, which we know is the correct result. However, there is a catch. The more precision we have in our systems, the lower our performance will be. And conversely, the less precision we have, the higher our performance. Let's move on to Visual Studio to really understand what this all means. OK, I have Visual Studio open here, and I'm calling a method named double addition. Let's see what this method refers to. We have this method here, and it's a pretty interesting example that you can easily replicate. Notice that we have three different variables here. The first variable, named x, is equal to 0.1. All three variables are of the double data type. Remember that. Next, we have a second variable named result which is equal to the multiplication of the variable x equal to 0 0.1 by 10. We have a third variable named result2, which is equal to the sum of x 10 times. We can conclude then that the result of this first operation will be the same as the result of this second operation, since mathematically they are performing the same operation. We have a console.write line here, where we will display the value of the variable result and the value of the variable result2. What do you think will be displayed as part of the console? Well, let's find out. We start the application. This is the console's output. Notice that as the first result, that is the value of the first variable, which is result, we have a value of 1. Uh, as a result of the second operation, we have the value 0.9999 and so on. This seems quite curious, but let me tell you, there is an explanation. In most systems, a number like 0.1 can't be represented exactly using binary bases. There will always be some kind of error in arithmetic precision when we use these types of numbers. It's said that the arithmetic precision error isn't very noticeable when performing mathematical operations. However, the more operations performed, the more noticeable this error will become. The reason we see two different numbers on the console is because in the first assignment, this one here of 10 times x, we only perform a single operation, whereas in the second, this one here, we actually perform 10 operations, and this accumulates the error in each operation. That's why we have this difference between the results, even though it's the same arithmetic operation. Let's stop this application, and I'm going to proceed to comment out the call to double addition and uncomment the call to this pair of methods I have here. I'm going to collapse this region of demo one. I'm going to expand demo2. This pair of methods will perform a series of operations that we have here. And basically, what we want to achieve is to be able to measure the amount of clock ticks it takes for each of these operations. To quickly explain, in my first method, we have a variable of the double type, and various operations are performed. We then stop our stopwatch. And finally, we display how long it took to execute this series of operations and display the result of the operations. We have a second method called decimal test, where we carry out the same operations as we have here. The difference is that this time we are using a decimal data type. What do you think will happen when we run the application? Well, let's see. Let's start the application. Here we have the console. Notice that almost immediately, 
this double value was displayed and it took a bit longer to display the values of this decimal or the calculations where we use the decimal data type. The interesting thing to examine here is the time each method took to execute the series of operations. Okay, as part of our double data type, we can see that it took about 3 million clock ticks. In the case of the second function, when we use decimal data types, we see that it took around 33 million clock ticks, almost 10 times more time than the double data type took. However, we can see that the result value of the double data type is not as precise as the decimal data type. You might be wondering why this is happening. Well, for a simple reason. The double data type uses a base 2, while a decimal data type uses a base 10. A base 2 is much faster for a computer to calculate. We can conclude then that the double data type should be used for performance matters, while the decimal data type for precision. If you use a double data type, you should be aware that you will have a loss of precision, but you will gain speed. On the other hand, with a decimal, you will gain precision, but lose performance. This is why the decimal type is so commonly used for monetary calculations. Lastly, you might be wondering, what about the float data type? Well, this data type is very similar to the double data type. Therefore, if you make the switch to test with this data type instead of the double, you will find results very similar to those we have seen in the video. As part of this video's description, I will leave a link to the website where you can find all the content of this video. Likewise, the source code that I used to conduct the different tests in this video will be available so you can take that code and conduct your own tests. Something very interesting you could do, for example, is to swap the different data types in the various operations to see how the execution behaves with each of them, measuring the different execution times for the operations. I hope you find this information useful. If you want to learn more tips about C Sharp and software development in general, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and click on the bell to receive notifications when a new video from the channel is released. See you in the next video.